Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on preventing empty text box controls on an Excel VBA user form. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in this Excel worksheet fictitious data that I added using an Excel VBA user form. And I'm going to write code to modify the functioning in this user form so that a value has to be populated in all the text boxes. So I have that user form connected to this orange rectangle in the top right corner. So if I right click, go to assign macro, you can see this is associated with sheet one dot open form. That's a subroutine that will open the user form when I left click on this orange rectangle. So left click on the orange rectangle it brings up the user form and you can see there are three labels and they dynamically populate based on the values in cells B1, C1, and D1 and then I have three text boxes and a command button. So first I'll start with how this is functioning right now. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to select the next row, the next cell, where I want data to be entered. So that would be B8, uh, participant 1007, right here. And open the user form. It's going to move it to the right so it's out of the way. And then I'm going to type in a GPA, let's say 2.2, midterm exam. Let's go with 58 and a final exam, let's say 80. So we have these three values that I've put in these three text boxes and they'll transfer to this Excel worksheet when I click enter. So the problem with this user form, uh, potentially a problem, is that if you leave a text box control blank on this user form and click enter, you'll have no value appear on the Excel worksheet. So it'll allow that blank value to remain on the Excel worksheet. And you may not want that. You may want a user form which only allows the text boxes to have an actual value. It doesn't allow them to be empty. So the user must enter a value in each text box. And then, of course, those values will be returned to this Excel spreadsheet. So, for example, if I leave GPA blank and tab, move over to midterm exam, type in a value there, click over to the final exam text box, enter a value there, and click enter. You can see GPA is blank, and the midterm exam and the final exam both have those values. So I'm going to write code that will force a value to be entered into all the text boxes. And instead of checking at the end, so you can leave a text box blank and click enter. It's going to check it when you exit the text box control. So it's going to catch it before you actually click on the command button. This button here at the caption enter. So I'll close this and clear out these two values and set this back on cell B9. I'm going to move over to the Visual Basic Editor. That's Alt F11. And let's take a look at what we have so far. So this is the code that allows this user form to function the way it currently does. The user form name is main. And here it is on the top right. And we have this sub open form. Again, this is associated with that orange rectangle on the worksheet. And it just has two lines of code, main.show and main.textbox1.setfocus. So this loads the user form and this sets the focus on text box one. That way the user can start typing immediately and not have to click on text box one to get started. Then we have the code that adds the data uh, after the command button is clicked. It adds the data to the Excel worksheet. Uh, fairly straightforward, active cell is equal to text box one dot value. And then we offset by one column for the other, the second text box and two columns for the third text box and then reset one row down. 
and then we call reset form and that's this subroutine right down here and this just this just clears all the values out of the text boxes so it resets the form and then it sets the focus back on text box one so this way you're ready to start with the next row of data entry without any delay it's going to activate text box one you start typing the values will be right in there so moving to this last subroutine this is the initialize for the user form and I have these three captions and you can see they're here above each text box control and they're loaded dynamically from the variable names on that data worksheet. All right, so I need to add code now that'll prevent these text box controls from being skipped, from having no data loaded into them. So they, they have to have a value. All three have to have a value. And I'm going to do that by double clicking on text box one and you can see that it loads this change event and that's not what I want now that's this is what it is by default but that's not what I want so I'm going to go up here to the top right there's this combo box and I'm going to select exit so private sub text box one exit by value cancel as msforms.return boolean. Right, this is the one I want here. And I can just delete this other subroutine. So I'm going to build this one out for text box one, and it'll be the same code for text box two and three. And I'll show you a quick way to put that together. So let's first load up the code for this subroutine, text box one exit. So I'm going to paste this in, and I'll go through this line by line. So let's start here at the first line of code in the subroutine. So we, we can see here that we have an if-then-else statement. So we have if, then, and else, and end if. And here at the top, it's if trim text box one value equals nothing and me dot visible then so this these are the criteria to run the code this code here so what this does is this is checking to see if the text box is empty and I'm using trim so the user can't insert one or more spaces and just move out of the text box and it not be detected so without trim here if it was just if text box one value is equal to nothing entering one space would allow the code to continue it wouldn't it wouldn't activate this the message box and everything it wouldn't stop that entry so you'd have just a space in there and for our purposes here that would be as unacceptable as the text box control being empty so that's why we have this expression here and then uh, this me dot visible so this has to be this has to be true and the user form me the user form me dot visible user form has to be visible for this code to run here what happens without this me dot visible expression is that when you close the user form this triggers one more time so that this code here prevents that so that's why I have both these expressions and they both have to be true so I have this and operator there so now let's look at the code so if the text box one is set to nothing and the user form is visible we move to this message box Please enter a value in the text box. It's VB critical, and the title is error. Then we have cancel equals true. We use this line of code so that we can set the focus on the next line of code. So after this message box is cleared, the text box one control will have the focus. 
and then the back color for Textbox 1 will be set to yellow. So the user can clearly see what Textbox control needs to be modified. If these conditions up top here are not met, we just go to this else statement and the text box one back color is set to white. And that's it. So it's going to be this code here for all three text boxes. This here is this code here is just text box one. So now I'll show you a quick way to reproduce this subroutine for all of the text boxes for the additional two that we have. So this is the code for one and we need two and three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy control C, I'm going to copy this whole subroutine and then move below the end sub and paste. And then I'm going to select it. So this this is the new one. And I'm going to select it and select control H. Press control H. And this is find and replace. So I'm going to clear out the find what text box and the replace with text box. And I want to find one, value one, and replace it with two. Find one and replace it with two. So you'll notice here that in this particular case, in this subroutine, every value that's set at one, if that's changed to two, that will be appropriate in this case. That won't cause any problems. By default, when you create a user form, it's named user form one. And I renamed this one main because if it was left as user form one, it would change that one to a two. Now you could go back and change that back to a one, but it's just one other step that you don't, you don't want to do. It just takes more time. So this will be reproduced without any uh, problems. This will be re reproduced for text box two. So I'm just going to replace all. So find what? One, replace with two. So I click replace all and I get this message box. The specified region has been searched. Five replacements were made. Click OK and you can see that every place there was a one, there's now a two, and that works for us. So I'm gonna move down below N sub for text box two, and control V. So again, this is three separate subroutines. And I'm gonna select the subroutine and do the same thing except for find what will be set to one and replace with will be set to three. And then click replace all and again we have the same message box five replacements were made click OK and then we can close this find and replace dialog so now we have the three subroutines we need that match the three text box controls and let's see how this works on the worksheet so B9 is already selected so that's the next row where I want to enter data click the orange rectangle open the user form and in this instance I'll use a GPA here 2.4 and a quick tab and for midterm exam I'm going to attempt to leave this text box control empty by pressing tab and I get this message box title is error the message please enter a value in the text box I click OK which is the only option here other than the close it with the red X in the top right corner and the back color for text box two changes to yellow and the focus is set to this text box. So I'm gonna enter an exam score here of 50. Tab over to final exam, put a value here of 65 and press enter. We can see that those values were returned to the worksheet. If I attempt to close the user form now, you can see it closes with no problems, and that's because, boom back here, that's because we have this me.visible code in this if then else statement, as I mentioned before. So this will prevent that message box from displaying that last time. 
So one of the advantages of this design, the way this is designed to prevent empty text box controls, and I mentioned this before, is that it's going to catch it right as the user tries to leave the cell empty. So if you have just three text box controls, you may not need that. You could write code behind this command button, which then just checks all the text box controls. But if you had 20 or 30 text box controls, you wouldn't want the user to get to the end and then find that there were 15 mistakes, 15 cells that were blank that actually need to be populated. So this will catch it as soon as an attempt is made to leave a text box control blank. I hope you found this video on preventing empty text box controls in a VBA Excel user form to be useful, and thanks for watching.